Hey, y'all. Thank you for uh, tuning in and uh, joining us. Uh, before we uh, sing a couple songs, I uh, just want to share with you, uh, as you know, we're in some tough and challenging times, and um, at times downright uh, scary. Um, and uh, David reminds us in the Psalms, you know, it doesn't say that he's, um, you know, never afraid, but when he's afraid, that he trusts in God. And so it's knowing who to turn to and where we get our help from, and that comes from the Lord. So listen to this psalm. This is Psalm chapter 56. Be gracious to me, God, for a man is trampling me. He fights and oppresses me all day long. My adversaries trample me all day, for many arrogantly fight against me. Verse 3, when I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust. I will, be, I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? They twist my words all day long. All their thoughts against me are evil. They stir up strife and they lurk and they watch my steps whilst they wait to take my life. Will they escape in spite of such sin? God bring down the nations in wrath. You yourself have recorded my wanderings. Put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? Then my enemies will retreat on the day when I call. This I know. God is for me. In God, whose word I praise. In the Lord, whose word I praise. In God, I trust. I will not be afraid. What can mere humans do to me? I am obligated by vows to you, God. I will make my thanksgiving sacrifices to you. For you rescued me from death, even my feet from stumbling, to walk before God in the light of life. Darkness tries to roll over my bones and sorrow comes to steal the joy I own Brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love Shame no longer has a place to hide And I am not a captive to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind And I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love Cause there is power Break off every chain There is power that can empty out a grave There is resurrection power that can save There's power in your name There's power in your name There is power that can break off every chain there is power that can empty out a grave There is resurrection power that can save There's power in your name There's power in your name and My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in 
And your love, my fear, doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, my fear, doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, my fear. Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, my fear. Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your I choose to bow This pain in the offering I lay it down You in the conflict When doubt surround Though my soul is unraveling I choose you now I will praise you Through the fire Through the storm and through there is nothing can never steal my song In the valley you were worthy You were good when life is not You will always forever be my song And I build my altar right here the darkest night it won't burn out for you were perfect no matter what in the joy of the suffering, suffering I'll sing it loud, loud. I'll, I'll praise you through the fire through the storm and through the flood there is nothing Never steal my song In the valley You are worthy You are good when life is not You will always Forever be my song You will always Forever be my song When the enemy says I'm done I lift my praise when the world comes crashing down I lift my praises high Till the darkness turns to dawn I lift my praises I choose to worship I choose you now When the enemy says I'm done I lift my praises when the world comes crashing down, I lift my praises high. Till the darkness turns to dawn, I lift my praises. I choose to worship. I choose you now. I choose to worship. I choose you now. I raise you through the fire. Storming through the flood, there is nothing can ever steal my song. And in the valley, you were worthy, you were good when life is not, you will always forever be my song. You will always and forever be my song. I choose to worship I choose you now I choose to worship I choose you now I choose to worship I choose you now 
Welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study, January the 6th. I want to share a passage of scripture from Genesis chapter 41. The actual story that I'm going to try to share tonight and hopefully bring some thoughts to us that we can think about in our minds. And that is the story goes from Genesis 37 all the way to Genesis chapter 50. Actually 13 verses and chapters in those verses all belong to uh, Joseph. Uh, question, have you ever had a dream? How many of us ever had a dream that actually came true? This story is about Joseph. It's a story about a guy who lived in the valleys of defeat, but also in the mountain tops of victory. What made Joseph so special? is not just how he handled adversity, but how he handled prosperity. Let me bring you up to chapter 41. I'm not going to look at all 13 chapters of Genesis, but going to sort of focus on chapter 41. And so Joseph is now um, coming from an ordinary family. He had 11 brothers, and they couldn't stand him, actually. And Joseph is now, in chapter 41, is in prison. And he had been sold into slavery, and both uh, because of a crime that he had not committed. Uh, you find that he uh, got a call or a dream from God, and God told him about that dream, and his brothers couldn't stand it because he bragged about it. And so they sold him into slavery, and from slavery he went to Potiphar's house, where Potiphar's wife accused him of rape, which was also false. And now for 13 years he's been in a prison. Uh, this goes clear back when he was 17 years of age. Can you imagine a teenager going through all this at 17, and now he's spending 13 years in a prison for a crime he didn't commit? How many of us remember Murphy's Law? Murphy's Law simply says anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Uh, Joseph was a law-abiding citizen, yet he could be a poster child for Murphy's Law. Joseph is like a man I heard about that was filling out an insurance claim because he had gotten in injured in a job. So he wrote this letter. I'd like to read you this letter. And it goes like this, Dear Sirs, I want to explain in this letter why I'm asking the insurance company to pay for all my medical expenses. I am a bricklayer and by trade, and on this day of my accident, I was working on the roof of a brand new six-story building. When I finished the job, I discovered I had about 500 pounds of brick left over. So rather than carrying the bricks down hand, uh, one at a time, I decided to lower them down by putting them in a wheelbarrow and by a pulley and a rope that was attached to the sixth floor. Securing the rope at ground level, I went up to the roof with the barrel and loaded the bricks into the barrel. I then went back to the ground and tied the rope to secure a slow descent. You will notice in this report on line 11 that I weigh 150 pounds. To my surprise of being jerked off the ground suddenly and losing track of what I was doing, I forgot to let go of the rope. Needless to say, I proceeded at a rapid rate up the side of the building in the vicinity of the third floor where I met the barrel coming down, which explains my broken arm and shattered collarbone. Slowing only slightly, I proceeded rapidly up the side of the building until my fingers of my right hand were deep in the pulley, which explains my broken fingers. By this time, I realized what was going on and held tight to the rope, but at the exact moment the barrel of bricks hit the ground, 
The bricks all fell out of the barrel, and without the weight of the bricks, the barrel only weighed about 50 pounds. I will again call your attention to line 11, of my weight being 150 pounds. Can you imagine I began a rapid descent down the side of the building? In the vicinity of the third floor again, I met the barrel coming up. This accounts for my two broken ankles and my dislocated kneecap. Slowing only slightly, I landed on the pile of bricks beneath me, which accounts for the knee cracked vertebrae, three cracked vertebrae in my back. Finally, I am able to stand up looking at the barrel six stories above me and realizing this is over. So I let go of the rope, which accounts for my broken skull. This is a picture of really Joseph's life up to this point. Everything that could go wrong from 17 years of age really did. All of these problems really started with a dream in Genesis chapter 37 where God gave him a dream. And in that dream, God told Joseph that he was going to raise him up, that he would put him to rule over his brothers and his father. So he bragged about this so much that he found himself in a pit, in a house, and now in prison. Once again, the dreams pop up. Now in prison, dreams are a big part of Joseph's life. He's in prison, and there are two men there with him. One used to be a cupbearer, a servant of Pharaoh. The other was a baker who baked all the goods for Pharaoh. We don't know why they really were in prison, but they are. They both had a dream, and that he can and he can't interpret the dream, but he also knows that God can't interpret the dream. So Joseph looks up at the cupbearer, and he tells him, "I have great news for you. Three days from now, and you'll be hanging out with Pharaoh all over again." So the baker said to him, "Joseph, can you interpret my dream?" And so Joseph said, "Yes." God can interpret your dream. So he says, I have some good news and I have some bad news for you. The good news is that in three days you're going to get out of here. The bad news is that you're going to get hung. And so the, both the dreams and the, both the interpretations came true. Now in Genesis chapter 40, verse 23, we find that Joseph said to the cupbearer, when you get out of here, please put in a good word for me with Pharaoh. You find in verse 23 that it's now two years later, and Joseph was forgotten. Can you imagine? Now you've been in prison 11 years, and now you set the, the cupbearer free, and you interpret his dream, which you think he would remember Joseph, and he would tell Pharaoh about him. But now... Two more years have gone by. So now he's been there 13 years. And now, uh, two years later, Joseph has been forgotten. But now, more dreams show up. Dreams are just a part of Joseph's life. And it's Pharaoh now who has the dream. Joseph is sitting in prison. He doesn't know that this very day he's going to be going to the palace. And in that palace, he's going to find out that all of his dreams are about to come true. For 13 years, he has been in adversity. And now he's about to see prosperity. We are the most prosperous nation in all the world. The poorest people in our nation are richer than 98% of the rest of the world. Joseph was about to face the greatest danger of his life. The greatest danger is not when we're in the valley. The greatest danger is when we're on the mountaintop. You see, it's easier to forget God in the good times than it is to remember Him in the bad times. Joseph knew what it was like to have nothing. Now he's going to a place where he has everybody and everything. Everything changed around Joseph, but nothing changed within Joseph. 
He was the same when he had everything as he was when he had nothing. He was the same guy in prison as he was in the pit. He was the same guy in the palace as he was in the prison and the pit. See, he focused on God on all these times. Why is it easier for us to give a dollar bill to God when we have $10 than it is when we have $100,000 and we have to give him $10,000? You see, it's easier to forget God in the good times. Joseph learned and knew three things about himself, and they're also true about you and I. Number one, you'll find in Genesis chapter 41, the first four verses. And it says, I am who I am because of the providence of God. Pharaoh had a dream, and he couldn't interpret it. Now the cupbearer remembered Joseph. Two years had passed. Joseph didn't know where he was going, but he was going before Pharaoh, and Pharaoh had dreams. Now, if you find in verse 14 of chapter 41, now Joseph is, Pharaoh is looking at Joseph. Joseph now is 30 years old, but he's looking at a guy who has spent half of his life in prison. In verse 15, you will find that Pharaoh asked Joseph, if he could interpret his dream. Now, Pharaoh, who didn't believe in God, was asking Joseph, who did believe in God, can you give me an answer to my dreams? You see, a world who doesn't know God is asking us, do you know God? And we know God, so we need to give them the answer, the answer that would really answer all their dreams. Salvation to a lost world is an answer to the dream of life and to eternity. In verse 16 of chapter 41, this is Joseph's one big chance. He's now standing before Pharaoh. Pharaoh's waiting on an answer for his dreams. Even if he couldn't answer the question, you might think, well, maybe I need to fake it because this is my one chance to get out of prison and not go back. But you see, Joseph was standing before Pharaoh not because of what he had done. He was standing there because of what God had done through Joseph. When you think about where life's actions and life's testimony takes us, I, I think back in Joseph's life, I look back at my life. I look at my life when I was approximately 17 years of age, sort of the age of Joseph. I remember sitting around a table with three tycoons of an oil company asking me would I go to work for an oil company. Looking at the bright future and the high pay and all the amenities that could be had. And yet I am so thankful that God was there and intervened. You see, when I think about all of that, I think about God's guidance in my life, which leads me to point number two. I am where I am because of the promotion of God. Could I do that? Did I ever think growing up in a small eastern town in eastern Canada of some 750 people that I would actually be in Lenore City serving at First Baptist Church? No. No never even knew where First Baptist Church or even Lenore City was, really at that time didn't actually know where Tennessee was. What can God do when you let God have your life? I am where I am because of the promotion of God. Joseph was standing before Pharaoh because of the promotion that God allowed him to have in his life. And and Joseph was giving God all the credit. So in verse 32, Joseph gives Pharaoh the interpretation to the dream because he says, I can't do it, but I know a God who can. And and God decides what happens. God decides when it happens. God decides where it happens. And God decides what he'll do, and he decides when it will be done. Now Joseph moves to the real application of life. Keep in mind now, he's only 30 years old. 
He's got no executive experience at all. He spent the last 13 years in prison, and he's now giving advice to the head guy of the country of the land, Pharaoh. Pharaoh knew Joseph for about 20 minutes, and he said after listening to all the interpretation and how the famine could uh, one day be prepared in the seven years of plenty for the seven years of famine, here's what he said to Joseph, you're the man. I need to hire you. And so it happened. God was the presence behind the promotion. No one ever came in one day from so low to so high a promotion. Why? All because God was in the midst of it. Then I think about point number three. I have what I have because of the provision of God. Joseph now has it all. And Pharaoh gives him an Egyptian wife who is the daughter of the most important priest in all of the land. A lot of people, you see, forget where they come from when they get to the top. When he has two boys, he now gives them Hebrew names. What are they? Manasseh and Ephraim. Manasseh, which simply means forget your trouble. Ephraim means fruitful. He calls his boys that because God caused Joseph to forget the bad things that happened in his life. And just to remember the good things. Joseph said, look what God has done. I'm second in command of all of Egypt. Really, he was more popular than even Pharaoh himself. He was what he was and had what he had, all because God did it. In the ministry, I see people forget what they ought to remember, and they remember what they ought to forget. Let one thing go wrong, and they're ready to blame God, but they forget all the good things that God is doing and has done in their life. Joseph didn't allow this problem to make him forget God or forsake God. He didn't allow prosperity to come before his thankfulness to his God. Joseph said, God made me. You see, we are not self-made men and women. We are what we are and have what we have because of the God we are allowed to accept and have in our lives. When you are in the pit, it's not hard to look up. But when you are in the palace, it's easy to look down. No matter how hard you have it, look at what you have and where you are and be thankful to God. In closing, let me make this statement. Nobody is exempt from the pit and the prison. But even in adversity, God is there with you. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. God has a plan for each and every one of us. Every plan is different for every single person. So let's just live for God. Let's serve God. Let Him have our life. And let's do it God's way. When you do it God's way, you will be the happiest person on the earth. Will you pray with me? Father, I thank you for a short study that you look at the life of Joseph. Father, just a young, young lad of 17. And the things that lay before him seem unimaginable. And yet it happened. And things like this happens to people every day. Adversity. But yet, Father, we still have life to serve you and to show you. And Father, you allow us new things every single day that you point out. We're thankful that we serve a God who loves us and cares for us. Lord, in adversity, yes, we can look up. But if we ever get to prosperity, help us not to look down. Help us to keep looking up because you're the one that has allowed us to have the prosperity that we do have. Look after us this year, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you. Have a good night.
journey through the long dark night out on the open sea by faith alone inside eyes watching me with the anchor holds though the ship's been battered the anchor holds the sail's been torn As I faced the raging seas with the anchor holes in spite of the storm and I've had visions. But I never knew They would slip right through Like they were only Grains of sand But the anchor holds Though the ship's been The ship's been battered The anchor holds The sail's been torn And I have fallen on my knees As I faced the rain Seas with the anchor holds in spite of the storm, and I have fallen on my knees as I 
Spy.